to the Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from uh, Chang Nation. Tell you the truth, I don't do too much Asian content as in like talking about Asian culture and Asian dating. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit more or try to do a little bit more. I know most of my audience is pretty mixed. So, but I mean, this might be helpful for other people too. So please like and subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, let's get to that. Chow. It's Chow Time. Hey Asian guys were words that Chen would hear every time he asked out a girl. It got to the point where Chen actually thought it was normal for girls not to date Asian guys and that he would have to get lucky to find a girlfriend. <laughs> Chen would constantly tell himself, It just takes meeting one girl and I'll be set for life. With this mindset, Chen- I think a lot of Asian men are in this boat. Most Asian men that I know are not very masculine, not very uh, forthcoming overall. They're very timid men. Just because Asian men were kind of raised to be a little bit more timid, like just to not to be, you know, the the, the nail that sticks out kind of thing. So because me Asian men were kind of raised to be kind of like that, we're not seen as the more dominant, more masculine type. And, you know, social media slash um, TV and things always portray Asians as uh, a weak, meager person. Chen would develop into a needy simp who would appease any girl that gave him the time of day. Now Chen had a good buddy named Chang. Chang didn't give a shit when a girl would tell him that she doesn't date Asian guys. Quite frankly, I don't know why his Chang is looking so weird. <laughs> It's funny though. He just thought those girls were weird and moved on to the next one since yep. he was outcome independent. Chang would say whatever he wanted whenever he wanted and didn't appease anyone. If girls liked him, then great. If girls didn't like him, then also great. Chang would often give Chen advice when it came to dating and quite literally tell him to stop being a simp. Unfortunately, Chen wouldn't listen. It's easy for you to say since you're six foot and I'm only five, six and a half. Excuse after excuse, Chen never listened. Now you guys might be wondering why I'm bringing up the story of Chen and Chang. The reason is because I actually used to be a Chen. I would find every excuse in the book for why I didn't succeed when it came to dating. And I was quite simpy. Like I literally have a video talking about my past as an Asian simp. How for me, I, get, I didn't date in high school. I was pretty nerdy, didn't do anything, but I got married pretty quickly in my 20s, early 20s. So I mean, I dated maybe five to six women before I got with my ex-wife. I don't really know if I was all that simpy, like, during the dating phases, but I know I was pretty simpy in the marriage itself. I always put her happiness in front of me. I always sent her on vacations. I didn't go on vacations myself just because I didn't really want to spend the money, just me personally. Um, yeah, I always put her happiness before my happiness majority of the time so i can agree with him however by changing my mindset and taking dedicated action i was able to go from a chen to a chang and in this video i'm going to talk about how to do so in your own life especially yeah i mean his transformation is quite in like stark he was a pretty chubby asian kid and now look at his fucking jawline it's like amazing so see if you've ever faced the no asian dating policy what is your type i've actually have not ever experienced this because <laughs> I don't I guess I don't ask that many women out overall but I do know a good amount of women that won't date Asian guys I just never asked these particular women out uh I've never been rejected because I'm Asian I've lately during like after the pandemic like this year last year I meet a lot more women that are looking particularly for Asian men which is kind of a stark difference than what I've, I've always been used to. So, uh, no Asian guy. <laughs> So what exactly is this no Asian dating policy? Well, it's essentially the policy some girls have where they just don't date Asian guys. Uh, white boys. I'm not. In a lot of Asian women are in this category. You know, you know, we talk about black women and black men and their culture all the time in this channel but our asian culture is not that much different it really isn't most of the asian women would actually prefer white men over asian men 
into Asian guys. Oh, he looks like my brother. This is actually quite common with certain Asian girls as you'll hear the excuse, I don't date Asian guys since they remind me of my brother. This actually makes no sense since you don't really hear this too often from girls of different races, but for it's funny because it's like they're using their own like the, the stereotype of all Asians look the same against themselves or something. <laughs> That's how I feel like. And he's correct. I don't ever hear, oh, he looks like my brother. Like, don't you think of other races would feel the same way? Except you mostly only, I mostly only hear this from Asian women also. For some reason, when it comes to the Asian... Actually, I don't hear it too often because it's different, all right? A lot of Asians that I actually date are lighter skin than me. I'm like one of the darkest Asians around. And because my skin tone, they don't really compare me to family members because I look so different from them. In community, this excuse is quite rampant. I've heard it a number of times in my own life, and I've also had a lot of Asian friends who can relate. Now, the scope of the no Asian dating policy isn't just limited to Asian girls, but it actually applies to all girls. Yep, that's the sadness for us Asian men. You know, even most other races don't like us or what would not prefer to date us. Like, at least that's how it was. I think things are changing now in the nowadays era when they're starting to realize that most Asian men are actually top earners. Most Asian men are very well educated. We're like the top education demographic and one of the top um, income earners in demographics also. So since dating is a preference, not every girl is going to like Asian guys. Some girls just have a no Asian dating policy for whatever reason or another. Maybe they had a bad experience with an Asian ex or <laughs> they just don't find Asian guys attractive. The thing to realize here is there's just going to be certain girls that no matter what you do or what you look like, they're not going to give you the time of day just because you're Asian and they have a no Asian dating policy. So now that we've covered what exactly the no Asian dating policy is, how how exactly do you deal with this policy so that you can really optimize your dating life? So I'm gonna give you guys a three-step process to leverage so that you can really deal with the no Asian dating policy and not let it affect your dating results. So step number one is acceptance. You gotta accept that some girls will just never like you. This and is true. that's just the reality of the situation. This actually transcends beyond the no Asian dating policy. Just in general, there's gonna be girls, even you know, guys, not in the context of dating, but for work or social reasons, who are just not gonna like you for X, Y, and Z reasons. You really have no idea why that reason is. It's out of your control and you really should just not focus on that. Since I'm a believer of focusing on things you can control and not worrying about things you can't control. Step number two is to optimize your DMV, AKA dating market value. So your dating market value, as I've covered in other videos, is comprised of your looks, verbals, and status. The easiest ones to work on are your looks and verbals. You just really have to diet, work out, get rid of your acne. And when it comes to verbals and those are big deals, man. Like all of this is not just for Asian men. This is for most of us working out. You saw how he looked beforehand with his chubby acne face. And now look at his fucking jawline can cut rope with this fucking jaw, you know, with this fucking chin and shit. This is growth. You most men can do this. Most men can at least up their numbers by one or two by working out, changing their diet. Look how clear this motherfucker's skin is. He's clearer than my fucking skin, you know, like, god damn. But these are all improvements. It's not just because we're trying to, like, look for women in the West. Even if we're a passport bros and we're looking for women in, you know, in other countries, these are all still things to be aware of. Remember, you want the best possible mate right to attract the best possible mate you want to put present yourself the best possible you know like looks wise you know speech wise comprehension wise you know it, it's 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 work charisma you basically want to just start talking to anyone and everyone yep. i've noticed that social skills and socialization are very momentum driven so if you start chatting up everyone like just talking to you the cashier or the waiter waitress you know generating small talk you're gonna get in a groove and get into a flow state where you can just start spitting things off the dome whereas if you're socially isolated let's say it's like covid you haven't talked to anyone for three months and then you have to order something in person you're probably gonna fumble over your words and it's gonna be super awkward so I'll I have a friend, a Filipino friend, knows everyone. Everywhere he goes, we go bowling, we go out to eat. He, hey, what's up?
what's up, dude? This hug, you know, like he doesn't know these people very that well, but that's how he acts with within everybody around him. So he people attract are attracted to that. And people just say they oh how you been you don't actually have to have that great of conversation half the time just saying hi oh you're doing good oh it's right nice to see you i'll catch you next time dude i'll catch you later and just that is enough social interaction to kind of get you going especially if you're constantly doing that to everyone around you hey what's up john yo what's up nick yo lisa what's up what's going on you know like that is actually very attractive. I would say, you know, just start talking to anyone and everyone. Start taking improv comedy classes or watching comedy since I feel. I 100% agree. I love improv. I love stand up. I watch it constantly. I love to me personally, how I see it is comedians are one of the smartest people in the world. And the, they're very intellectual right to be able to clap back with jokes or things like that on the fly that means their minds are moving that means they're already kind of contemplating what's going on with this conversation where it might lead oh they might say this if they say this i got something going on right here they're about to clap back at them i think it's superb skills that comedians have and yes improv classes if you can learn to just speak from the fly like that you're golden I feel like being witty and funny is a good way to have charisma and social skills Correct. and then last but not least work on your body language so a really easy way to work on your body language is to start recording yourself speaking and then seeing what you do with your hands with your facial expressions and just the little things since if you have a really dynamic voice but your body is very stiff it comes off as incongruent and I have a very dynamic voice. I get loud. I, my family's just like that. All my aunts, when they're speaking, it sounds like they're yelling, but they're not. And that's how I am half the time, too. But I'm very animated when I speak with people. You know, you kind of see me here when I speak on the videos. It's a little off, right? So I would say those are some things you can do to work on the verbals slash charisma part of the DMV equation. And when it comes to status, I wouldn't worry too much about status. That just comes down to really leveling up your social media. So taking pictures, posting stories, and also getting a high paying job or one that has some perks, right? But for this video's sake, I think looks and verbals are a bit easier to control since fixing them is more short term versus let's say you want to become a doctor and that takes like eight plus years. Now, step number three is the Geomax. So what is exactly is geomaxing well it's basically optimizing your location for dating and before passport bros is what geomaxing is he's going over it like this wasn't a passport bro video but i use this because it's part of it we have to geomax what's geomaxing going to locations where you in particular are exotic or different than the norm just being exotic or different from the norm, you stand out above everyone else already. Most women see you as, oh, he's different. He's exotic. They gravitate towards you already because you are different. This makes sense for passport bros. Unless, you know, I'm Cambodian going to Cambodia, then it's a little bit different. But, you know, a black guy or a white guy or a Hispanic guy going to Cambodia, Thailand... Those guys are going to be different. But everybody's going to be like, mm. And I think it's weird that people are like, oh, people look at me. Well, you're so different from the norm. Of course, people are going to look at you. It's just a normal thing. Or you respond saying, Well, Chang, why would you ever move location just to get a girlfriend? You're so needy. The reality is the three pillars of life are health, wealth, and love. If you have your health and wealth down, you're in shape and you make good money, but you don't have a girlfriend or a significant other or have that love component figured out, life is quite lonely. So that's actually why I think if you have the opportunity to agree. work remotely or move locations for dating, I actually think it's a good investment. You're just going to increase your chances of checking off that love pillar. So an easy way way to really figure this out without actually moving to a bunch of places is twofold. First, you could just visit different cities and see whether you like them, go out in them and try to talk to people, see what kind of results you get. But the issue with that is it's passport bros, why you need money, why you need some, you know, income coming in, even if you're doing that, or you just need to save your ass off or just make damn good money. But 
in person is the best. It's not as scalable. So I would say another option is you could just use online dating, drop yeah. your location in different places. Nah, don't do that. I don't suggest that just personally. Places, you know, Hinge, you can do that, Tinder, Bumble, pretty much all the apps, you can change your little pin around. So you can plop your pin in, let's say like New York City or something for a week and then compare your results to somewhere such as like Austin, Texas, right? That's a good way to A-B test and see which cities you do the best in. And that's another way you can kind of filter out this no Asian dating policy. If you start noticing that you're not getting the reception. Again, this happens to be a no dating, Asian dating policy video but i think this this applies to all men it literally applies to all men you know he's just focusing on asian men on this particular one but everything he says actually works and applies for all men and you want then perhaps that's not the best city to go to right and that pretty much concludes the three-step process to overcome the no Asian dating policy, which is to accept and move on, optimize your DMV, and Geomax, aka move locations. And that pretty much concludes this video. Again, passport bros, accept that we can't change anything here, and uh, there's going to be better suitors for us outside of the U.S. That's acceptance, you know? So, I mean, again, all the three steps he says, it, it applies to us passport bros too. video just to give you guys a quick recap today what i did was i first covered what exactly the no asian dating policy is next i covered how to overcome the no asian dating policy last but not least i gave you guys a three-step process to leverage so that you can overcome this policy in your own dating life that was some good chow i mean i hope everybody watches this and you know gets something out of it even if you're not asian i don't I actually don't think this really matters if you're Asian or not. Everything he said was spot on just for men in general. You know, there's plenty of men that, you know, meet women that don't want to date them. It's okay. It is what it is. And you just got to accept it, move on, look for someone else. And uh, the best way for us to up our value or up our chances of finding someone is fixing our looks, our status, and our charisma. That's those are three for sure. And then, yeah, geomaxing, looking for areas that we know we're going to find better suitors. That's it. Please like and subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys next time. It's ciao.